Hello all I am Dr Vibhash Kumar Vaid and today in this video we'll going to discuss about the bony pelvis you can see here this is the bony pelvis the word pelvis which is derived from the greek that means is basin and this bony pelvis is formed by four bone unite at the four joint you can see on the side and anteriorly here the two hip bone is present posteriorly here you can see this is the sacrum and posterior inferiorly here we can see this is the coccyx bone and the four joints are superior lateral to the sacrum and the ilium of the hip bone you can see here a articulation and this is called the sacroiliac joint so here we have a two sacroiliac joint then you can see here in between the coccyx and the sacrum this joint considered as a sacrococcygeal joint then you can see anteriorly two pubis bone is attached with each other and here we can see this is called the pubic symphysis then this bony pelvis is divided into two part by this pelvic brim here this is called the pelvic brim or superior bony aperture or inlet of the pelvis and this pelvic brim which is runs from the posteriorly from the sacral promontory to this superior part of the pubic symphysis this is called the superior part of the pubic symphysis and this pelvic brim which divide this bony pelvis into two part upper larger part and lower smaller part the upper larger part is considered as a greater pelvis or false pelvis while below this pelvic brim this cavity is considered as a true pelvis or lesser pelvis the greater pelvis which bounded anteriorly it is bounded by the muscle of the anterior wall of the abdomen and posteriorly it is bounded by the anterior surface of the body of the lumbar vertebra and the side to side this false pelvis is bounded by the pelvic fossae here you can see this is called the pelvic fossa while inferior to this pelvic brim this is called the true pelvis here this cavity is called true pelvis and anteriorly this true pelvis is bounded by the posterior surface of the pubic symphysis this is called the pubic symphysis and here this is the posterior surface of the pubic symphysis as well as the posterior surface of the body of the pubis this is the body of the pubis posteriorly it is bounded by the anterior surface of the sacrum or pelvic surface of the sacrum as well as coccyx bone on the either side the true pelvis is bounded by this superior and inferior rami as well as the lower part of the ilium so on the side to side this true pelvis is bounded by this superior and inferior rami and the inferior part of the, the ilium and this true pelvis has a two aperture the superior one is called the superior aperture and inferior one is called the inferior aperture the superior aperture is also considered as a pelvic inlet or the pelvic brim when we trace this pelvic inlet or pelvic brim anteriorly it is extend from the superior margin of the pubic symphysis then here you can see this is called the pubic crust then pectin pubis this is this line considered as a pectin pubis and this is called the arcuate line and the anterior margin of the ala of the sacrum this is the ala of the sacrum and posteriorly here this is called the Uh, sacral promontory so when we trace from the anterior to posterior it is runs from the upper margin of the pubic symphysis pubic crust pectin pubis this is the pectin pubis then arcuate line anterior margin of the ala of the sacrum and sacral promontory so this is the pelvic inlet and this pelvic inlet in heart shaped in male and is widest in posteriorly you can observe the posterior part is widest in the female it is oval and widest more anteriorly than in the male posteriorly the inlet is indented by this sacral promontory here you can see this is the sacral promontory and this sacral promontory form the posterior indentation of this pelvic inlet and it is more so in the male than in the female then the pelvic outlet here this is called the pelvic outlet this is the anterior part and this is the posterior part 
the pelvic outlet is bounded anteriorly by this arcuate and the inferior pubic ligament posteriorly it is bounded by the coccyx this is the coccyx and on the east side it is bounded by the ischio pubic ramus here you can see this is the ischio pubic ramus or side of the pubic arch the ischial tuberosities here this is called the ischial tuberosities and this ischial tuberosities and the sacrotuberous ligament from the sacrum to this tubercle here a ligament is run and this ligament consider as a sacrotuberous ligament the ischial tuberosities and this sacrotuberous ligament also form the side boundary of the outlet now we'll discuss about the anatomical position of the bony pelvis when examine the isolated bony pelvis student generally do not oriented as it is as in the intact body when you going for the correct anatomical position you have to keep in these point the anterior superior iliac spine and the pubic tubercle and these two structure which lies in same coronal plane you can see here this two structure which is lies in the same coronal plane then this is called the superior aperture or pelvic inlet and this superior aperture or pelvic inlet faces forward and upward at the angle of 50 to 60 degree of transverse plane then this is called the inferior aperture or pelvic outlet and this inferior or pelvic outlet which faces backward and inferiorly at the angle of the 50 degree of the transverse plane so these are the point it help during the anatomical position of the bony pelvis now we'll discuss about the pelvimetry the importance of the measurement of the pelvis is mainly obstetric but also forensic and the anthropological pelvimetry can be done in the following ways first is pelvimetry on the skeletal or bony pelvis and the pelvimetry on the living subjects and the radiological pelvimetry so here on this video demo will going to measure bony pelvis so first will going to measure the superior aperture or the pelvic inlet so first we'll see the anterior posterior diameter so anterior posterior diameter or true conjugate which is taken from the midpoint of the pubic symphysis to the midpoint of the uh, sacral promontory and this average distance of this anterior posterior diameter is 11 cm then the transfer diameter and this transfer diameter is taken from the midpoint of this arcuate line and this diameter is approx is 13 in centimeter then the oblique diameter and this oblique diameter is taken from the uh, midpoint of the sacroiliac joint to the midpoint of the superior ramus and this oblique diameter of the pelvic inlet which is about the 12 cm now the dimension of the pelvic cavity or true pelvis here you can see this is the true pelvis anterior posterior diameter which is taken from the posterior surface of the pubic symphysis to the sacral third vertebra and this distance is about 12 cm the transfer diameter is taken from the deepest part of the lower medial surface of the ilium bone and this distance is about 12 cm and the oblique dimension which is taken from the lowest point of the sacroiliac joint this is the sacroiliac joint and this is the lowest part of the sacroiliac joint to the mid point of the opposite obturator membrane here we have attachment of the obturator membrane so on the mid point of the opposite obturator membrane and this distance is about 12 cm then the diameter of the pelvic outlet so anterior diameter which is taken from the inferior margin of the pubic symphysis to the tip of the coccyx and the distance is about 13 cm then the transfer diameter is taken from the both the ischial tuberosity and this distance is about uh, 11 cm and the oblique diameter from the midpoint of the sacrotuberous ligament on the one side to the junction of the ischio pubic ramus from here 
and this distance is about 12 cm so these are the pelvimetry of the pelvic inlet pelvic cavity and the pelvic outlet now we'll discuss about the morphological classification of the pelvis according to the anatomical and radiological data the morphologically this pelvis is divided into first is gynoid type and it is present in 41.4% individual this is normal female pelvis the average diameter we have already discussed and the inlet is round or slightly ovoid with the transfer diameter placed well forward from the sacrum the side wall are more vertical than in the android pelvis second is android types and this android type present 32.5% individual and it is resemble as a male pelvis the inlet is triangular with the greatest transverse diameter placed much nearer to the promontory than in the gynoid pelvis the subpubic angle and the greater sciatic notch are narrower so that the cavity is funnel shape and the outlet is reduced in all diameters third one is anthropoid type and it is present 23.5% individual shows resemblance to the pelvis or anthropoid apps then the platyploid type which is present 2.6% of individual and it is somewhat opposite to the anthropoid pelvis out of various type as we have discussed only the gynoid pelvis permits a normal delivery of the child the other three represent the different type of the contracted pelvis now we'll discuss about the sex differences in the pelvis the most marked of these differences are due to the adaptation of the female pelvis for the child rearing males have strong muscle thick bone and prominent bony markings as compared to a male pelvis a female pelvis shows the following differences first the false pelvis is deep in the male and shallow in the female then pelvic inlet in heart shaped in male due to forward of the sacral promontory in the female it is transversely oval next the pelvic cavity is smaller and deeper in male it is a long segment of the short cone in the female the pelvic cavity is roomier and shallower it is short segment of the long cone then the pelvic outlet is smaller with the ischial tuberosities turn inside in the male in the female the pelvic outlet is bigger with the everted ischial tuberosities sacrum is longer and narrower in male while it is shorter and wider in the female then subpubic angle is narrower that is 50 degree to 60 degree in male the angle is wider that is 80 degree to 85 degree in the female this is the most important difference then the greater sciatic notch is wider in female that is 75 degree than in the male that is 50 degree then the acetabulum is large in male and its diameter is approximately equal to the distance from its anterior margin to the pubic symphysis then last one the preauricular sulcus is more marked in the females so this is all about the bony pelvis i hope all of you understood the topic thank you for watching